Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows, and today we're gonna to be talking about my top 10 favorite party games. Hey guys, and thanks for joining me today for my top 10 favorite party games. I'm excited to be able to go through this list. I super enjoy a good party game. Uh, I've already put together one of these lists in the past, but my tastes have changed just a little bit and there have been a bunch of new fantastic games that fall into this category. So I wanted to put together a new video to share them with you. Before we jump into the video, I do want to kind of define a little bit of what I'm calling a party game because there are some really fantastic experience games that have a higher player count. All those things are important in the definition of a party game. But they take a little bit too long to explain, I think. So I'm kind of condensing my definition of a good party game to something that you can learn to play in just a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, that rules out some of my favorite games like Captain Sonar. This game is super fantastic. I love the experience from it. But in order to get down and play the game, either everybody has to already know how to play it or you got to spend 10 minutes with each player uh, teaching them how to play the game. Uh, amazing game. Doesn't fit in my category. Steam Court is another one of my favorite games. It's so much of a favorite that I actually published it. Uh, it's based on a ladder trick-taking card game and I added a bunch of powers and it's a lot of fun. In fact, I've hosted several like themed game night, party nights where everybody dresses up in their best steampunk outfits and we play. It plays up to 12 players. Really fun, one of my favorites, but Again, it takes about 15 minutes to learn how to play. One of the beauties of this that almost fits it into the party category is that you can kind of drop in and out of the game as you're playing it, which is nice, but doesn't quite fit what I'm looking for for the specific criteria of a party game. One other whole genre that I want to give a shout out to is uh, the stuff that's going on on jackboxtv.tv. Uh, it's a platform where you uh, buy a set of games, you host it on your computer or TV, and everybody else chimes in and plays with their phones. Man, I've had a blast playing some of those games, especially like TKO and Drawful and some of those. Uh, really enjoyable, but again, I'm looking for board game specific. I think I've taken enough time to get my clarifications. Let's jump in with number 10. Number 10 on my list is Two Rooms and a Boom. This game is a fantastic party experience game where everyone gets a card that will determine their role for the game. You're gonna split up into actually physically two different rooms and the goal of the blue team is to protect the president, make sure that he gets to meet the doctor to get his medicine, and at the end of the game, keep him separated from the bomber who is trying to meet with an engineer to get his bomb working. And basically players are gonna be spending a couple minutes in each round They'll walk into a room, they can reveal their card to other players if they choose to, they can hide it if they have a secret identity that they don't want to reveal, and players basically just talk to each other, try to decipher lies, try to catch a glimpse of other people's cards, try to make good decisions about who should be the president or the leader in their room to vote for who should leave the room and who should be coming in. Uh, it's a lot of just really crazy fun. If you aren't one of the main roles in the game, if you're just kind of an average Joe bystander, it is a little bit less exciting, um, I will admit, but there are so many roles in the game that you can plug in, especially with expansions and things, that pretty much every single person in the game could have something specific that they're doing. There are like zombies that you can be, there's Romeos and Juliets that have to see each other. There's a bunch of different things that you have to do in the game. And at the end of that round, when you finally figured it out and you get the president into the room with the bomber and you're on the bad guys team and they blow up, it's one of the most fantastic experience moments ever. There's also some traitors and those are probably the best roles ever. You can be a secret agent where you are on the red team, but your card is blue. And so you flash it to other players on the blue team. They give away all the secret information. Uh, I've never had my heart pounding in my chest as much as I have uh, the time that I played this at Dice Tower a couple years back. We had a huge group of people playing it. I was a trader. I had all the information. Super vivid memory because it was such a fantastic experience. Number nine. The number nine spot on my list goes to a classic party game. It's, it's a modern classic that has caught on and they've made a million expansions of it and it is the game Codenames. My favorite personally is Codenames Pictures. I know a lot of people prefer the words. I am a picture guy and so I love it. I love the newer released versions like Codenames Duet which is the two player version. 
allows you to have both pictures and words in the game. Uh, the branded versions like Codenames Marvel and Harry Potter and The Simpsons and all the other ones that are out there, Disney, are, are a lot of fun. They add to it, especially if you don't own the original game and you're just looking for like uh, something that might appeal to your kids or whatever. Uh, really great party game where you split into two teams, you give clues to people, a one word clue and a number clue, and they are trying to guess which cards are on your team based on that clue. So it's a fun word game. Uh, it is a little tiny bit difficult to play with children is my only downside on this one. Even the Disney one, uh, a lot of times when I play with kids, I end up resulting to, or they as clue givers, end up resorting to uh, giving like a one word and a one number clue, or which you have to do, uh, like, you know, Winnie the Pooh one. And so that does take a little bit of the steam out of it, but really really great genre of games in fact i want to kind of broaden this category just a little bit because if you already own code names and you enjoy it there are a lot of newer games that have come out using similar mechanics which i really enjoy and so i give all the credit to them for creating that whole concept uh, but some other new ones that are pretty interesting are shadows of amsterdam this is the same type of thing but it's in real time so you're giving clues to your team to get them to navigate around the board you're actually making a path with your character trying to make it to certain spots uh it ups the pressure just a little bit. It makes it to where a one word clue is not so bad because you're just trying to get them to move one space um, <clears throat> at a time sometimes. And so I feel like that's an interesting one. One of the brand newest ones I just got introduced to is called First Contact. Really neat game where you, uh, I think this actually kind of fixes some of the downtime in the game as well because you are either like an Egyptian god trying to communicate to the peoples or you're the peoples trying to communicate back to the Egyptian gods and you are going to be, you have kind of a, this cipher board that has symbols on it and so the, the lowling peoples, the humans will be using the same grid of like five by five cards and they'll be turning some sideways to kind of get you to grasp a concept. Maybe it's like big or sharp or valuable. And so they'll turn all the cards that are that they think are valuable and then you have to give them the symbol on your little chart for what valuable is. You don't know if they actually meant valuable, but they picked the gem and the knife. Maybe they meant sharp. And so you've got to communicate back and forth using these symbols. Uh, really fun concept. A little bit more complex, but yet a little bit uh, more going on. So in a good, like, if you've got people who understand it and know what they're doing, it gives everybody something to do on their turn. Like this whole genre of games. Give a clue, give a word, break into teams. Really fun stuff. Number eight. For the number eight spot on the list, I'm gonna kinda of do the same thing and kinda of put a whole category of games together. Uh, one of the games that I got to play this year was Secret Hitler. I had heard a lot about this one. It's a very interesting one. I was kind of nervous of the theming of it. This game is a lot of fun to play. I probably would have put it higher on my list, but simply because of the title, I feel like there's a little bit of a stigma that could go with that. And so it's, it's a fun one, it's worth experiencing. Uh, if you don't like that theme, it's very much the type of game like uh, the Resistance or Werewolf where people have secret identities, you're gonna be voting for each other trying to sway uh, which party is gonna win at the end of the game. I felt like the art and the components for Secret Hitler were really polished. I enjoyed the aesthetics of it, and so that put it higher on my list than Werewolf or some of the other games. Uh, but it fits into that same category, and so you've kinda got your whole choice of options. Do you wanna be a werewolf, or do you wanna be a Nazi, or do you wanna be uh, whatever the other versions are, the resistance? Um, there are a lot of different themes that all have this very similar game mechanic, and so I want to kind of just stick all those into this number eight slot. Uh, included in that is a really fun game called Where Words. It's a 20 questions type of game that's placed in that werewolf universe. It also has a really cool app that accompanies it, makes it a lot of fun so that everybody can play. Uh, you're still doing the type of thing where you close your eyes, pick a word, everybody looks up, and you figure out uh, who knows the word, who doesn't know the word, what is the word. Really interesting stuff. Um, but whole category of secret identity games, Putting those all together, uh, putting, I think, Secret Hitler at the top. Really pretty, a lot of fun, really cool game. Number seven. My number seven slot goes to Throw Throw Burrito from the makers of Exploding Kittens. Uh, this game just came out this past year, or at least I got to play it this past year. It is a crazy game. It has some nostalgia value in it for me because it incorporates some mechanics that I used to love as a kid. Uh, the base mechanic for the game is essentially spoons. So you are looking at cards as fast as you can and you're trying to get a set. You are grabbing a card, looking at it. If it doesn't help your hand, you get rid of it. As soon as you do get a set of certain types of cards, you put them on the table. 
Some of them will give you points at the end of the game, a bunch of crazy characters. Some of them will initiate like a brawl or a war or whatever. And so when those cards go down, you make the announcement and then players like either on the right and left of you or all the other players in the game dive for the burritos to try to get them. Then they're trying to chuck them at each other because if you get hit, you lose the burrito life. Uh, once all the burrito lives are gone, you score the round and then you play two more rounds or one more round and whoever wins, uh, they may end up getting the most points and win or they might have to do like a showdown where they're literally back to back taking three steps away from each other turn chuck the burritos it is a crazy mess I love it super fun I will say only downside to the game is that it looks super light like it'd be really easy to just jump into and play and this is on the border of like it takes me a little while to explain that there's gonna be three rounds you gotta have these tokens these cards mean these things these cards mean these things when I shout them only you two do stuff the, the explanation time is a teeny bit long in this, but play it one time, even if you don't understand the rule, it's excellent fun because you're getting burritos chucked at your head. And overall, really, really good time. Love the energy factor, love the replayability, love to bust this one out at conventions and things because it's just hilarious to watch people jump into number seven, or whatever number I'm on, throw a throw for me. Number six. Number six on my list is just one from Repost Production. This game is probably the most like um, mainstream feeling game in my lineup. This game is the uh, everybody writes a clue, everybody reveals the clue, everybody answers the clue. Uh, it feels a lot like a lot of other board games that you played out there, but it does have some nice little twists uh, in that when you're giving the clues, it's a cooperative game for one, which is excellent. So that there's nobody, there's no teams, there's nobody against anybody, which is really nice. In this game, you're trying to help one person on your team figure out the answers that are written on your card. When you do it, everybody can write a clue and it's wide open. You can write whatever you want. In fact, it's a little bit better that you put weird g clues on the sheet because any clues that match, you reveal them to everybody else on your team. If they match, you don't get to use them for the round, which means the guy guessing gets less help and it makes it harder for him because he has fewer words to choose from. But if everybody's answers are so weird and off the wall that they, they weren't in on that main concept, then it's really hard for the guy to guess as well. And so this is a lot of fun, especially when you end up writing the same clue as the same other person two or three times and you're like, ah, oh, we were thinking so much alike. And then on your next round, you're like, I'm gonna write something totally haywire. He'll never think of this, you write it. He also matches you again, what? And so there's a lot of fun to be had just in the way that our minds associate things together. This is a nice new, just simple, sharp gameplay one. Super easy to jump into and play, really fun, player counts really nice, really cool stuff, just one. Number five. All right, so we're down to number five, halfway through the list. All the games that I've been talking about are games that I've played a bunch of times with family, friends, with high player counts, with low player counts. This next game is maybe the one that I've played the most this past year. Uh, it is Finger Guns from Indie Boards and Cards. This game is so easy to jump into uh, that it's, it's like my go-to ad game night. Let's just start with finger guns. It's easy. Uh, in the game, everybody has a card. It shows you what your motions in the game are. You're trying to kill each other off, which is simple and fun, killing each other. Uh, you're either gonna be you know, shooting one other person and taking away their health or shotgunning somebody or blowing up some dynamite and hurting people on both sides of you and also hurting yourself. Uh, one of the best parts about the game is that when you die, you have been eliminated, all your health is gone, you then turn into a ghost which is a great concept. And when people try to shoot you, if they try to shoot you, the bullet goes through you and hits the next guy, which is a great strategy in the game sometimes to shoot a ghost knowing it will hit somebody else and it won't trigger any of the other things in the game. Ghosts can actually win in the game, which I love. My kids love this game. Everybody that I've played it with has a blast. It's really, really fun. It's like a stripped down version of uh, Rock, Paper, Wizard is a very cool game where you're doing hand motions and stuff. There's a lot going on in that game. It's a little more strategic. This one is just super fast, easy to jump into and play. Finger guns at high noon, lots of fun. Number four. No party game list is complete without Happy Salmon. This game is a blast to play. If you don't own it, stop the video now, go wherever you need to do, buy it, add it to your collection. It's super small, it's compact, it's super cheap, and it's literally like some of the most fun that you can have playing with a deck of however many cards are in here, 25 cards. Um, this game 
is kind of easy to forget because it's a little bit small. It kind of tucks into your, your, your game shelf and you kind of forget that it's there. And then you pull it out of the game night and you say, oh, have you played Happy Salmon? And the person says, oh no, I never heard of that game. Oh, all right, well, we're gonna play it right now because you need to experience this. You play the game, it's, uh, it's similar to some other games, but you've got a deck of cards that you are trying to find matches for. You reveal the top card. It says, uh, do a fist bump. And so you have to find somebody else who has the same card fist bump them and then you can get rid of that card. And the next card says high five and you gotta find a different person to high five and give them that card. The funniest card in the deck is the happy salmon. You literally have to find someone else with a matching card. You do this weird happy salmon thing that's hilarious. Um, the part that makes the game so fun is that you get halfway into the game and you are literally screaming at the top of your lungs. You know, fist bump, fist bump, somebody give me a fist bump. You only have two cards left. You're so close to winning. You finally get rid of that card at the same time as somebody else, to win the game, you have to grab the salmon off the table. You're supposed to do like a little happy salmon thing with the wings, and then you yell, I happy salmon, I win the game. It's fantastic. As soon as you finish, everybody at the table says, let's play it again, and let's do it right now. And then, because you were so loud and crazy, all the people at this table, this table, and this table are staring at you going, what just happened? And so, by the end of the second game, Two guys have lost their voice because they've been yelling so hard and having so much fun and they're like having heart palpitations. And then five other people from those other tables are like, okay, I gotta jump in, I gotta just do one game. And you play this game over and over and over again with different people or the same people. We like to shake it up with like the silent version because usually by game four, you've lost your voice and so now everybody's doing this trying to figure out motions to the game, which is also fun. And it's just the type of game that if you don't have it, add it to your collection. Happy Salmon, fantastic. Number three. These next three games, I actually had a really tough time sticking in order because I enjoy all three of them an incredible amount. Uh, one of them is brand new to me this year. I hadn't experienced it until uh, maybe Gen Con this past year, and it is the game Medium. Uh, this game is incredibly simple. It's a deck of cards. There's some like tokens with victory points on them. I literally never play by the rules because other than the base rule, like it, you don't need anything else. <laughs> In the game, everybody gets a hand of cards. You play one card and then the person that you're playing with plays a card. And the idea of the game is that you're trying to match uh, a concept with that person. And so I might play the word sand and you might play the word uh, ocean, even though that would be an unlikely combination. And then on three, we synchronize our brains, we mind meld, and we shout out the same word. So we say one, two, three, beach. And if I say beach and he says C, then we move on to round two, where we now take these two new words, beach and C, and then we say Atlantic, you know, or whatever. And we can do that up to three times. If we match on any of those times, we'll gain a point token. If we match, and if we do it on the first time, we get more points, second time, fewer points, third time, like one point or whatever. Um, and then my turn is done, and then the next two people play. And there are some additional cards in there that you can play where like I can jump in on somebody else's to try to match it up. Uh, and there's, the artwork for it is really cool. There's like three crystal balls that come out, and when they come out, the third one comes out, that's supposed to be the end of the game. I literally have only ever played by the rules once. <laughs> and I always play it now, because it's just more fun, where I play a card, anybody else at the table can play a card that they think is a good match, and then on three, we all shout out the word that we think matches. I don't know why, but it is, it's similar to that other thing I was talking about before with just one, where somebody else thinks like you in the game, and you just form this like friend bond with them, because now you guys are shouting out the same answer, and then, like, one of my favorite parts about almost any game is the aftermath. Like, the game is over, or the round is over, and now we're rehashing the fun time that we had playing it, and I'm saying like, no, no, the word for those two was definitely this word, it was the best clue, and you're saying like, oh yeah, I should have thought of that, you're right, does it? I said such and such, ah, oh, so I'll now make sense because I got the rest of the story. So it works pretty well, it works really well with uh, strangers. Super fun to play because the concepts are big and broad. It works even better with friends and family that you know really well because then you can just reference crazy stuff that fits those two words together perfectly and is a blast. Uh, love the energy, the speed. I love just like the dimensions of the box. It's small, it's easy to take with me and bring. Sometimes I just literally take one deck of the cards uh, with me when I'm going somewhere, which is great. Uh, just, it works really well for a party. It's a great icebreaker, really easy to jump into. Check out me. Number two. If you follow along at Tantrum House at all, or if you know my gaming preferences to any extent, or if you've watched any of my other top 10 videos, then you know that one of my favorite games that I talk about a lot and I very much enjoy playing is Don't Mess With Cthulhu from Indie Boards and Cards. 
This game is a blast. Super fun, can't recommend it enough. The only reason that I'm bumping it to the number two slot is I've played it so many times that in this past year, another game, which we'll see at number one in just a second, kind of out seeded it in the number of plays. Still super fun, very much love it. It's a bluffing and secret deduction game where you are trying to either act as an investigator or a cultist. Those cultists are trying to release Cthulhu. They're trying to flip over the Cthulhu card. The investigators are trying to reveal all of the Elder Sign cards to lock them away and win the game. This is one of the few games, in a bluffing game, where unlike um, Secret Hitler or The Resistance, in those games, you have to be a pretty good liar. Like, your poker face is the key to winning those games. Don't Mess With Cthulhu gives you a lot of, like, protection from that because you can be telling the truth and look like a liar, or you can be lying and look like you were telling the truth, or at least have a really good excuse for why, it, you know, you weren't lying, or you said you weren't lying, uh, because of the way the cards are revealed. So the mechanics for it work really, really well. Super enjoy this game. I will say, one reason it got bumped a little bit lower is... Uh, the theme to this game, I, there are tons of people who know the Cthulhu lore and they're familiar with it and they immediately understand it. There are a lot of people that I play this game with where I say, now you're going to be the cultist and I see this little like, you know, clip in their mind like, what, what are we talking about? I wish there was a game that played the same way, had the same intensity and excitement, but maybe had a different theme. It would definitely be the number one game on my list forever and ever. As it is, it's going to sit at the highly coveted number two slot. Check out... Don't mess with Cthulhu. Such a good game. Number one! All right, we are down to the number one game on Will's top 10 party games of 2020 list. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. You're wondering what game is it that is easy for everyone to learn, has fantastic components, is fun for kids, adults, families, everything you could ever imagine, only takes a couple seconds to learn, plays with an infinite number of players. That game is Wavelength. So this game, I got introduced to it at uh, Gen Con maybe last year. I saw it from across the hall and it pulled me in because it has this fantastic dial component. Really sleek style art illustrations that are different than a lot of the other games that you see out there. Uh, it really just, you want to know what it is when you see it. To play the game only takes a couple seconds to explain. I'll explain it to you right now. In the game, cards have uh, a spectrum on it. It might be best cereal, worst cereal. You place it into the slot. You, as the clue giver, look and see where the spectrum has randomly landed at. You close the shield, and then you turn it around, and you give a clue to your team that will allow them to dial in on that spot. So if I said, mm, best cereal, worst cereal, count, dra count Chocula, then my wife would immediately know, turn it all the way to the right. It's the best cereal in the world. However, the rest of the team is all going, ugh, gross, really? I hate that cereal. Life is the best one. No, give me that shredded wheat. And so it has this great, uh, like, ice-breaking conversation style where everybody can talk about random stuff and argue over stuff. The other team is always chiming in with, like, no, it's definitely got to be to the right or the left. And so you've got this great, like, just human conversation going on as a result of it. You're also gaming at the same time. You tune it in. Other great element in the game is that the other team can play this, like, Price is Right thing on their turn where basically it's like, do we think the center of the spectrum is to the left or to the right of what they've guessed? And they'll score points for that if they get it right. Then you have this like great reveal moment. You flip that latch, you reveal where it was at. Everybody goes, oh, we should have listened. She knew that it was the best cereal. Why didn't we listen? You've got that great after game conversation thing that I was talking about earlier where everybody gets to kind of recap like, oh, I thought you meant this. That's why I went this way. I couldn't say this clue because of whatever. My favorite one is round animal and pointy animal. And everybody always picks blowfish, which is both. Anyway, um, really, really fun game, really fantastic components. Like I said, you pull the thing out, it's heavy duty, it's gonna last. Uh, it's just got that table presence that draws people in. I played over and over and over. It works great as just like two or three people at a small party. It works fantastic if you've got an entire room full of people. We played this at Tantrum Con and we played like six different teams with tables that were on their team. It just, it works in every situation. It looks so pretty, it's so fun to play, so easy to teach. <sighs> Wavelength is my number one pick for 2020. Thank you guys so much for joining me, for hanging out, for listening through my whole list. Hopefully you found some games that are interesting to you. 
uh, any of these games I'm confident you would enjoy. I've played them over and over. Uh, I tried to pick stuff from different genres, stuff that you maybe have not heard of, so it kind of gives you some new stuff to look into. I hope that you enjoy them. Check them out. We've actually done preview videos on a lot of these games or reviews or playthroughs, so you can kind of check some of those out and get an even deeper feel for the types of games that we played. Uh, if you are looking for other games like strategy games, Melissa has a top 10 uh, game list that you should check out. We also did uh, like just our favorite top 10 games. There's a the guys of Tantrum House did top 10, the girls did top 10. There's a lot of other videos out there that will give you great resources to find fantastic games. If you love tuning in and just chatting about random stuff or listening as we chat about random stuff, we've got a podcast that we record on every Monday. You can find that on the iTunes or the Amazons or the Stitchers, wherever you're looking for stuff. Uh, join us. Uh, so many fun games out there to play right now. If you haven't heard of these, then there is a broad and wide world that you need to jump into and have fun with your friends and family through. Uh, if you have heard of most of these, then I'd love to know in your comments what other games that you'd recommend to me. Uh, even if you're watching this video like two years from now, I'll probably still be checking it and I would love to know what new board games are coming out that you think I would enjoy based on my top 10 list. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for following along at Tantrum House. Thank you for subscribing and all the great things that you guys do. We love playing games with you. Hopefully we'll see you at a convention or a game night or at Tantrum Con sometime soon. I'm almost out of a voice because I've been so excited talking about all these games. Thank you guys for hanging around. Catch you next time. Oh, I forgot to mention Funky Chicken. Not as good as Happy Salmon, but still really funny. And so if someone likes chickens more than they like salmon, you could check this one out. Because it incorporates mechanics from games that I grew playing up. Playing up. About my favorite top 10, my top 10 favorite board games. Party games. Finger Guns at High Noon, lots of fun. Did you notice that I said I had two things and I can't remember what the other game was I was gonna say. Just rock, paper, scissors. Number one, number one, number one, number one.